So uh, let's continue with this topic, kind of this the biggest topic in the last couple of days. And uh, I just found something that pretty much blows this whole thing away as pretty much a hoax. <laughs> so they say uh, this is a uh, implosion system of a nuclear weapon that the Iranians tried to develop. And um, I don't think that the... Um, Iranians write their numbers that way, BB. I don't think that they write their numbers that way. Yeah, this is actually the Farsi script. So um, it's the same numbers, same mathematics, except they use different symbols for the numbers as well. The nine symbol is similar. The fourth, the fastest symbol looks like an upside down heart. That's interesting um the two like a rune pretty much the three there we go two three four i don't know you can see there are similarities but the iranians don't write their numbers that way i'm sorry Netanyahu. yeah your fucking thing is nonsense <laughs> Preparing nuclear tests. Here's a map of five potential locations for a nuclear tests in eastern Iran. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Again. Uh, yeah, there we go. I mean, they would write it like this. They would, they would fucking write it like this if they're writing in Farsi. I didn't notice this in the last video. But come on. Here we go. Yeah. This is Farsi. This is Arabic numbers. Yeah. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Let's move on. We have many, many more such documents. And fifth, integrating nuclear weapons on missiles. Here's a design for a nuclear payload on a Shahab 3 missile from the archives. From the archive. It's old stuff that they wrote on paper because this is old. This is decades old. There's a warhead. I mean, 2000, fucking 2001, 2003, I don't know, 2004. Here's the bomb. Here's the bad word. Here's the bomb. And I don't have to remind you of that, that Iran is continually expanding the range of its ballistic missiles, its nuclear-capable missiles. They started with 1,000 kilometers, and now up to 2,000, roughly. They can reach Riyadh, Tel Aviv, Moscow, but they're working on far, far greater ranges. They're planning much Longer range missiles. Much longer. Carry nuclear weapons. Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, they want to nuke us. So these files conclusively prove that Iran is reasonably lying when it says it never had a nuclear weapons program. The files prove that. The files prove that. But here's what happened next. Iran was faced with mounting pressure in 2003. Remember that, that was following the Gulf War. So it was forced to shell Project Amak. Yeah. But it didn't show its nuclear ambitions. Uh, they didn't show the nuclear ambitions. Oh. So Iran devised a plan to do two things. First, to preserve the nuclear know-how from Project Amak. And second, to further develop its nuclear weapons-related capabilities. That plan came directly from Iran's top leadership. Here's another document from the archive. This is following the new directive of Iran's Ministry of Defense, Mr. Shampani. Today is uh, the director of the National Security Council. Following the new directive of Iran's Minister of Defense, the work would be split into two parts, covert and over. 2003, there we go. Yep. 2003, this was 15 fucking years ago. Yeah, that's right. Here's another one. Oh, interesting. And how the fuck is this relevant until today? 
Do you have any proof that they continued this program? Do you have any proof that they pursued? I mean, by now they should probably have them. It's 2018. Yeah. It's carried out still by someone who is named that way. And why would they need nukes when they are allied with Russia, who has the most nukes? Russia is allied with Iran. So if something happens, uh, we would have, you know, Russia pretty much going to war on the side with Iran. And they have nukes. So, and uh, of course, the only thing that they risk when building nukes is a U.S. invasion. That is the pretext that they can use to invade Iran. They will want to do so if they are so mad as to do so because Iran has 50 million people, 50 million inhabitants. But let's take a look at Benjamin Netanyahu on Fox and Friends. Yeah, that's right. Let's take a look. This is interesting. Even after the deal. Iran continued to preserve and expand its nuclear weapons know-how for future use. Why would a terrorist regime... A terrorist regime. A terrorist regime. There we go. Terrorist regime. ...hide and meticulously catalog its secret nuclear files, if not to use them at a later date. If you saw this presentation this afternoon, you had to be impressed. Not only the way it was done, but what he said. And joining us right now is the man behind that presentation... You had to ...who be was impressed. working without no... You had to be, you had to be impressed. I was not impressed. Sorry, I was I was absolutely not impressed. The fucking backdrop looked shitty. The audio was shitty. Yeah. You had to be impressed by it. Presentation. Who was working without notes? The Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. Working without notes. Working without notes. Oh, nowadays it is considered a fucking achievement to be working without notes. Whenever I was holding my presentation, I always worked without notes. Be it in high school or in university, it's ridiculous. Live in Jerusalem. Welcome, Mr. Prime Minister. Welcome. Thanks so much for your time. Good morning. Good morning. Good well, to talk to you. Well, yesterday, you got, oh, I understand you were able to get that uh, treasure trove, uh, thanks to the Mossad and their great work, out of Iran in January. Great work. In January. So they got some old documents from 2003, proving nothing. Who knows how the situation changed. There was a nuclear deal in place. And, uh, I mean, uh, the Iranians, allegedly. I don't know. You want to tell me, do they have them or do... I mean, by now they should probably have them if they have been working so long on them. How long did it take for Israel to acquire nukes? I don't know how long. Fucking uh, got the, the plans given to them by the United States to build their own. Yeah. That's it's quite something. Let's move on with this. Why did it take so long to present it here in May? I won't say how, uh, how we got it and who got it, but... Israel obtained this information actually in February. Uh, in February 2018, you obtained information from 2000, wait, 2003, which is relevant to today. How? So many things have changed since then. There was no Iranian, uh, you know, agreement back then. Can you prove that they're still doing so? It's 100,000 plus documents. Huge. Uh, trove, as you say. It's in Farsi. We had to put uh, translators on it, uh, professional people who understand uh, uh, these uh, scientific... It's in Farsi, except the numbers. I mean, the numbers are normal, you know, Western numbers. They wouldn't write in their own numbers, would they? Ridiculous. Just would blow it all out of it. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, that is. And uh, technological things. So it took us a while to do it. Uh, I met the president in uh, early uh, March, President Trump. I described to him what we have. I said that we'll move immediately all this information uh, to the United States, which we did. 
So we've been examining it um, simultaneously here in Israel and uh, uh, you in America. And uh, it's taken us a while, but uh, I think we know what we know. I've presented mm -hmm. what we know, and it's bad enough. This regime, the preeminent terrorist regime of our time, in which, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's goons chant. The preeminent terrorist regime, says the leader of um, Israel. <laughs> terrorist regime. Yeah, Israel is going to lecture about it, lecture us about terrorist regimes. Death to America, death to Israel. This death to America, death to Israel. Regime, yeah. uh, had a secret nuclear weapons program, and they're trying, under a very bad deal, had to get a nuclear arsenal. A. They shouldn't get it. And go ahead. Tell the folks at home, uh, just to piggyback on what you're saying, the mullahs are saying death to the America. Mullahs, the mullahs. Some mullahs. America, death to Israel. They have funded proxy wars, funded terrorism, killed American soldiers Sound in Iraq. familiar? Iraq. So just. Uh, Israel is not doing the same things. Oh, and the United States is not doing the same things. Who have they, who has Iran funded? Hezbollah and Hamas killed American soldiers. I don't, I don't know. Maybe in Iran, in uh, fucking Iraq. I don't know what are American soldiers doing there in the first place. That should be the first question. Describe a world where these radical mullahs, these radical Islamists would be armed with nuclear weapons and how serious this would be for Israel and for radical Islamists armed with nuclear weapons. It's only good to arm uh, radical Islamists with our weapons, with the weapons we give to them to kill Bashar al-Assad and his soldiers and to topple him and or, you know, to kill Gaddafi or something like that. Yeah, it's only good when we fund terrorism. Somebody else does it, not that good. For the United States and the rest of the world. Well, wow. Angela, Zionism, you, fucking Zionist bitch right here. What you just described is what Iran is doing today without nuclear weapons. I mean, it's gobbling up one country after the other. Gobbling up one country. What? Are you fucking, are you fucking kidding me? Iran, American, gobbling on one country after another. Iran. Let's take a look. Iran. Fucking uh, U.S. bases, right? U.S. bases, Iran. Yeah, Iran is totally gobbling up all of those countries. That's right, Iran, right here. Yeah. What What are they gobbling up? Iraq? Are they gobbling up Iraq? Well, maybe because there's now a power vacuum right here. And they have a uh, considerable, um, you know, Fiat minority. Or is it, I mean, it's pretty close to the Sunni majority in Iraq, which are now in power there. So yet, yeah, obviously, Israel doesn't like that. And Saudi Arabia, like I said, doesn't like that whatso fucking ever. But yeah, sure, Iran is gobbling up one country after another. We have so many bases, US military bases here. It's ridiculous. Yeah, Iran wants war. Look at how close they put their country to our military bases. Yep. Sure, sure. They fret. Yeah, I mean, how can they threaten the United States if they are surrounded from Pakistan, from Afghanistan, from Turkmenistan, from Turkey, from Iraq, from Kuwait, from Saudi Arabia, from the United Arab Emirates, and from Oman? And Israel is, of course, also here. There we go. That's how it is. Yeah, accuse others of aggression while you're fucking encircling their country. And uh, we all know the last step of Wesley Clark, what he was talking about. What, yeah, yeah, what if this, what if this was the case, right? I mean, what if Iran had a fucking base in Bermuda or in Alaska? Yeah, fucking ridiculous. There would be a Cuban Missile Crisis 2.0. Yeah, it's all part of the plan. Let's move on. After the other. It's threatening to uh, annihilate Israel. It's trying threatening to put to its annihilate. army in Syria uh, in the service of... Uh, of Aren't you do also trying to put your proxy forces into Syria and your Mossad fucking Abu Akbar al-Baghdadi Mossad fucking connection? You, you fucking kidding me? You created ISIS. Israel created ISIS to destabilize the whole region tyrannical regime it's uh, putting the Saudi position Arabia, Israel the United States 
secret services working together. Obviously, Britain highly involved, France also involved.